This is where long arms help. Here and here. Okay, so in the back, here's the two. All right, welcome back, Loop Tubers. Jamie Bruce, as you can see, got this year's rig behind me, and I'm gonna do something a little bit different than the typical walkthrough uh, you usually see on the Lube Tube. You know, I'm not just gonna go through and flex all the stuff and show you everything. I'm actually gonna rig this thing myself from scratch. I do it every year. Hopefully, I can teach you something in that regard. I mean, I, I, it hasn't always been like this. I haven't always had a big ball and Pro V bass. Like many people, my first boat was a 14 footer, um, you know, and I used that all the way kind of through high school. At one point I didn't even have a motor, just a trolling motor and just kind of traded my way up, bought some salvageable boats and put some electronics on and fix a few things up. So in that process, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for it because I learned how to do all this stuff and, you know, traveling around all over North America, fishing the Bassmaster Trail. If something goes wrong on the road, I really want to know how to get to the root of the problem fast. The service yards are, are full of people that just drop their new boat off and, and have it rigged and they have no idea what's going on in it and that's fine. Uh, but it's just not how I do it. So I'm gonna walk you through every step of the way. Batteries, trolling motor, graphs, jack plates, chargers, whatever else goes into these things, there's lots. This one's gonna be the most rigged one I've ever had. Uh, hopefully it can show you something in this series. So I'll stick around if you don't mind subscribing. It uh, helps a lot because I'm just adding to the workload hauling the camera around and you know, a free subscribe just kind of keeps things rolling. So appreciate it guys and we'll see you in there. All right, back on the boat prowl here. Uh, if you didn't watch the first episode of the series, uh, go back there, there's a couple tools and things, just hacks you need to know, even if you're not interested in batteries, just skip through and see what you need to know because a lot of this stuff is gonna get repetitive, but doing the wire runs today um, for my 16 volt and for 12 volt to the bow, gonna pull some transducer wires, there's a couple tricks you need to know there. Uh, gonna do a few bus bars, clean things up a little bit, get ready for the live scopes and all the graphs and live scope turd and everything that's going on this. So it's a lot of prep today, nothing too glamorous, but some need to know stuff if you're looking at rigging a graph or anything electronic on your boat. Okay, so here's something that I've fussed with a lot in the past. It's running these big side imaging transducer plugs up through your rigging channels. This is a Pro V Bass I'm working on. The same applies to any boat. Um, this one's particularly easy to work on this year. Everything's really tight, clean in there. Uh, rigging channels, you know, everything looks good. There's doesn't look to be any uh, blockage or anything from what I've seen so far. Um, Lund actually put this rigging rope in, uh, you know, pretty nice little touch, but uh, typically in what I did yesterday for the battery channel, uh, run your fish tape, put a rope to it, and then every wire run you chase with a rope. So. What we're gonna do here, I've got the side imaging transducer taped to my rope, taper that tape down so there's nothing to snag on. Uh, it's gonna be a back and forth process no matter what. Um, so since I'm running this big deucer head, I'm gonna add my wire runs for my graph. This is 10-2 Anchor Marine shielded wire. Um, I'm gonna put a run here and a run here and get yard sailing her through. All right, this isn't anything fancy, but it's something that's easy to forget about. Label your wires. Doesn't, you don't have to use a break out the label maker or anything like that. That's probably gonna get cut off anyway. Uh, I know this one's going to the bow, shorter runs going to the console. And like I said, one of these runs is gonna jump off at the console. I'm gonna hook a bus bar to that. And the next is going all the way up to the bow. So I got the speaker pulled out. I'm gonna intercept this wire about halfway and then continue the run. And I almost forgot and this would have sucked because I'm pulling this rope this way, chasing it with wires, I always wanna add another rope to follow it up with so I can keep that channel accessible. Uh, I still have another side imaging deucer I have to rig up through here. You never know if you have to replace something or pull it out. You always want that rope in there, take it fishing, all that, leave it in for the season. Don't, uh, don't do the one and done. Uh, this is where long arms help. Okay, getting the back dialed up a little bit here. Got lead here for the bow, one here for the console. I'm gonna run bus bars on the ends of each of those. I'm gonna keep the fuses up at the unit. I don't want just a jumbled mess back here. I do have one more jack plate to add to this bus bar. And then that's pretty much gonna be it for the back. She's still a bit of a mess, but we're getting closer. 
just uh, try to keep everything tight, square it away. Use your mounts, use your zip ties. I've got each of these labeled. One thing I should add too, on these ring terminals, you'll notice there's a flat side, you know, where it's raised up on one side. And obviously you want that to the back. Uh, otherwise, if it goes like this, it'll just mash that terminal down and not a good scene. I've seen that a lot. It's obvious, but something to keep in mind. Okay, just firing in a perco switch up at the front here. Um, I've got the 12 volt from the rear on number two, 16 volt, which is gonna be the main driver on number one, and the output that's gonna to go to the bus bar I'm putting up here, gonna mount this in here nice and clean. So then, God forbid, if I ever kill my uh, 16 volt batteries, which will be on number one, Oh man, not really a one-handed operation. I'll just switch it over to number two and it'll run off 12 volt, get me by. All right, just rigging up one of the front graphs here. Uh, just something I should point out that I do. This is a stock glass fuse holder in line. Every graph comes with a different fuse holder. I switch all mine out to this style. Uh, you know, if you have three different types of fuse, a mini, a regular blade fuse, and a glass fuse. It's just more backup you have to have. I go to this style, I just get like a bulk pack. Um, you know, still match your manufacturer's recommended fuse size, and you can fit them all in these, and just keeps everything clean. And uh, you know, if you do happen to crater a fuse, it's an easy fix. It's not digging through every compartment in the boat pre and you have the right fuse, so just a little tip there. All right, the worst part of the rig is now done. Everything from here on out is all the fun stuff, just plug and play at this point. So I'll show you where we ended up, you know, walk through the whole thing and just kind of show you how it works. So you already saw this earlier. This is a bus bar. These are the two leads I added today. One goes all the way to the bow. One is a short run just to the console. That is 10-2 Marine Co. wire. Everything's how it should be. There's caps still have to go on these when I'm all said and done, but that's how that looks. So the short wire runs up under the console. Made sure they're up under this ledge. No water can get at them. This is just gonna be for my two graphs at the bow, side imaging units. And if you wanna add anything, that's fine. There is a factory you know, fuse panel like all boats have, uh, but they've got enough work to do. They've got pumps and lights and all kinds of stuff to worry about. You don't want all that stuff getting in the way of your electronics. And then this is still a continuous run from the back. The one wire jumped off at the console. The other one I ran comes up here into this compartment, into that perco switch. And then I've got these bus bars here. So how I have this perco switch set up is one of these leads that we ran today is from a 12 volt. That's this one here. The others from the 16 that goes to my batteries just on the other side of this wall that I put in, in the last video. Uh, and then just one out here. That's gonna go to the positive terminal on my bus bar. Both negatives, one from the 16 and one from the 12 go on the lower terminal. And then you can just stack all your graphs on these as you go. Just makes it simple. I start at the back and stack my way to the front, uh, or bow, sorry, we're in a boat. So, so I gotta clean all this up still once everything's in and just make sure everything's labeled and just super tight. Everything's gonna be running off the same style fuse. So right now I've got it set on one for 16, two is gonna be for 12, and then off in the middle. So I've got my graph here just to show you. You can see where it's 16.2. What I'm gonna do, you know, something freak happens and my batteries die or whatever, I forgot to plug them in. I'll show you the fail safe, okay? Never shut your batteries off the hard way. It's uh, just like an old Dell from 1999. If you do that, it can mess it up. So any graph, just shut her down, right? I'm gonna take this switch, move her over to two, which is 12, fire this unit up, and you can see we've got 12.9 volts there. 
So we're all good here. So when you hear people talk about clean power, uh, you know, it's kind of more of a recent thing just since graphs have gotten so much bigger and live scope and putting so many on, you really have to have that in your boat. Uh, direct runs. There's a lot of easy outs, you know, from the factory, there might be a little 18 gauge or a 16 gauge that you're tempted to plug in that goes through a million things. And, and that's just not exactly what you want. If you do have to deal with that, that's where the 16 volt batteries really come in. Uh, they can handle that voltage drop. You know, you're still gonna have over 12 volts at your graph for sure. Uh, almost no matter what kind of garbage you have to run it through. And that, you know, that's saved a lot of people too, but I use the 16s because I want the absolute clearest picture possible. And I wanna put a lot of power in a small space. With this system, I've got the option for the 12. I've got that redundancy if I need it. I don't have to worry about power. That's gonna be it for me. If you haven't checked out the last rig and video on the batteries and chargers and all that jazz, check that out. Next ones are gonna be a little more fun. We got a bunch of scopes and uh, big Garmin's and jack plate, live scope turret, all kinds of gear hopping on this thing. And it should be a little bit more fun. The, the ground works late. It's like anything you do, prep work is important. My eyes used to roll in the back of my head when I uh, used to hear that, but it's the truth and do it right. You won't have to worry about it all season. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one.